So my first question is, what made you want to study journalism? Um, I'm, I don't, you know, I don't really know. I mean, I, I did media at A levels at, uh, at sixth form. Um, I did media and English. I just like to write, and I think it was sort of like, oh, I like both, but I don't really know what I want to do. Um, mm. So I started off doing mass communications at Hertfordshire because I thought I'll, oh, I'd love more of the film side and everything, um, and I just loved just loved journalism then. So I picked up that as a, a major. So I ended up doing journalism and media and dropping the back the film. So I no longer do mass oh, communications. But yeah, growing up, I always read um, magazines. I always, you know, I've got like a, an embarrassing collection of Vogue. I've like. I've never been in them, I just been in them. Um, I've always read, yeah, like Cosmopolitan and everything like that. So I just think it's sort of, I thought, oh, I'll give it a go and end up loving it. So do you think you want to build yourself a career in magazine journalism specifically, or do you have something yeah. else? Yeah, to- yeah, because um, I think in first year we did more like news based or more yeah. sort of political and government. Because I remember we had to write about Brexit and everything, which is fine. I did fine in it, but it wasn't what I loved I love sort of doing like real life stories and everyday sort of lifestyle pieces and Mm -hmm. things like that I see and do you have like a role model in the industry that inspires you yeah I probably do I I was um interning well I have been interning for Marie Claire for almost a year now and uh probably the person that did it under her name was Ali Head and she was the head of fitness lifestyle and sort of wellness for Marie Claire and she was just awesome and she that brought her first place in London this year and she just lives that the best life and she's such mm-hmm. a good writer and she's such a lovely person and, and she was similar to me you know didn't really know what she wanted to do and sort of fell into it and yeah probably probably be her and my sort of inspiration to look up to. Because if you can afford to live in London, then you must be doing something right. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> it's expensive. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so now moving over to the questions about your magazine, Uplifted Magazine. So yeah. how did you come up with the idea? What motivated you to sort of starting this magazine? Because I know it's a magazine very focused on like, it's very niche theme. Mm-hmm. So your magazine is about um, women that live with uh, life um changing conditions chronic mm-hmm. illnesses so what did what motivated you to sort of like started this magazine um when we first like got put in the breakout rooms in zoom by john and he said oh you got to think out the box like new original ideas it was like a like <clears throat> crap and i think even recently the last assignment i just did the portfolio there's eight thousand um publications in the uk so to think of a new idea that's not been done it's like this is impossible um <laughs> And then over time, we got, we just started speaking. Olivia opened up about her mum. Well, actually, it was Jenny. We Jenny asked us, you know, when we had a, like, fake interview each other. She loves the question, of, like, what's the toughest thing that you've had to overcome? And we all started sharing. Uh, Olivia spoke about her mum's breast cancer diagnosis and having to go to chemo with her. Um, Jenny spoke about um, losing her dad to bowel cancer that's the whole reason why she came to uni and Beth who was originally in the group of us um her then we started talking on this conversation Beth's mum was like she was like a nurse a head nurse of a cancer ward um in Lister in Stevenage um so she would like sort out who's the patients she was like the head and she had some incredible stories and that I could relate you now I've had very close family members have lung cancer my granny's got prostate and we all the, the sad you can still see me. <laughs> there we are. My dad, someone's trying, my mum's trying to call me. The sad reality is, is that um, everyone knows someone with something. And I think when we looked into it, there wasn't a magazine out there. Well, there's like the nursing times and there's like, you could find a specific, just say you've got breast cancer. There's a Future Dreams magazine that's specifically for breast cancer, but it's all very doom and gloom it's like these are the symptoms this person's died this person's died this person is now got it again it's all very like cheat like yeah if this is if you've got it like just say you've got breast cancer and and you read this it's not gonna it's not gonna motivate you it's not gonna yeah and you want to hear a story and you read all of this oh it is horrible and we wanted something where they're going through treatment and they're in the waiting room and they can read it and they 
see this person's overcome that and then she's run a marathon now she's doing this and she's raised this amount of money for charity and she's incredible or how to redraw on your eyebrows after you've lost them in chemo because it it's not on there or the best wigs to buy or even for like ms you know um when doing a makeup piece with this um lady with ms and she spoke about treatments that work for her and how she the love of medicine things like that they're just they, they still want that these women they still want to feel sexy and beautiful and powerful but they're just made to seem weak and that they can't they can't stand out anymore they've got to sort of fade in and all they are is their illness but they're not and I think that's what really we wanted to do so would you say that your ultimate goal is to just basically empower these women with these life conditions do you yeah. think that's the main goal of your magazine yeah. Yeah. just to empower them and to show that they're not defined by their illness that there's so much more mm -hmm. And where do you get this? Um, so, for example, you mentioned like how to do your eyebrows after you've lost them to chemo. And then how do, how do you kind of like find this? Do you do your own research? Do you speak to people directly? Yes. How do you, how do you come so up with So my two makeup pieces were well, ones coming out. The first one I did was with Megan, who had mass activation um, cell syndrome, which basically means her cells regenerate every 24 hours. So what? I just say, like, I use this, like, makeup remover. I'm mm -hmm. fine with it. She could use it one day, be fine. She could use it the next and go into anaphylactic shock um, and be allergic to it. So for her, when using makeup, it's such a big risk on what am I going to be allergic to and what am I not? So when I was writing a sort of disability-friendly, um, treatment-friendly makeup piece, I don't know. And mm -hmm. I found Megan, who... Is literally she is so good at makeup and she knows everything about every ingredient about every makeup she has to live life like that she has to know what's in what products what works for her and so we did a piece together she told me the products that she likes to use and how she uses them and she's in a wheelchair herself so how easy they are to open and everything everything like that so i, I asked the women because they know they know the best themselves you can go to the experts um like some charities will do sort of zoom sessions where we sit on and we can like listen or but mainly it's just hearing from the women because even like my fashion piece on how to style a stoma bag yeah I could I can make a guess at it but we've got seven women to come in and show me what they wear and that's what we did and it, it worked really well because just hear it from the women with stoma bags instead of just plucking it out of thin air that's what that's what we do and how do you reach out to the people you want to interview or feature in your magazine? Um, Instagram, Instagram and word of mouth, I'd say. For the first edition, we met, well, I contacted one lady. Her name was IBD Warrior Princess, and she was, like, head of the fashion game on Instagram, first Doma bag. And she was like, oh, you should, make, you should speak to so-and-so. They would love this. And, so, and then you sort of branch off. Mm -hmm. And then someone says, oh, but I've got this woman. I follow her name's Tanya. You should, you should message her. Okay, message Tanya. Oh, have you messaged Lucy? She's, she, I know she's in Manchester, but she's incredible. So I messaged Lucy. And you sort of go down this, this path because they they're already in their own community of women at the stomach, but they already have their community. And because they all love fashion, they all follow each other. And then we got seven of them. We brought them and they all met for the first time and it was just lovely. But mainly social media, word of mouth. Um, and then we had Sarah Jane on board as well. And that was Jenny's best friend. She had endometriosis and she sort of started up the whole the whole thing. Because when we had to do this just as an assignment, we interviewed her. Um, so when it comes to be a real thing, we was like, get her back on board. So yeah, friends, friends and family who want to share and um, Instagram, word of mouth. Mm hmm Okay, so do you have any plans of um, just changing the Uplifted magazine from the online platform, exclusively online, to maybe printed or any other format in the future, or is it just going to be exclusively online? Yeah, I mean, we would love to go into print. Um, it's just very expensive. So, like, for instance, Cosmopolitan is £3, but for us to do it, um, we would have to do it per order because we couldn't bulk buy a hundred thousand copies mm -hmm. um so it'll be like 25 pounds if that makes sense because you when you bulk buy obviously they get cheaper but where we'll only be able to buy a hundred right now um they have to be a bit more expensive but we're hoping to like in the future um even either do like an annual an annual sum up or maybe get a deal with the nhs where we do certain prints for 
their hospital waiting rooms and their treatment mm. treatment rooms. Um, we did have to, we, we didn't like to go into print. It's just finding the right time when you've got enough readership. Who's going to buy it? <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Um, okay, so uh, one last question is: How do you manage the stress from obviously uni and coursework with managing your podcast, your magazine? How do you go about that? Um, that sounds silly, but you just, I knew I just had to get it done. Um, the week leading up to the launch was like, it is not supposed to be really fun and exciting. It was like really, it was really stressful. I remember on the day of the launch, we was up at six to make, cause it launched at eight. So we had to get up, make sure everything's ready. Have final, have, we had a final Zoom meeting, but the night before we was up until two. Mm-hmm. still doing the exact same thing and you go to bed for four hours and you're up again um with uni work we did Sharon did have a meeting with us and was like you know you can delay it because it's you're launching during your last month of uni but where we won the money in October um from the competition you've only got six months to spend it so we had to spend it because mm-hmm. we had the money we're not giving it back so we had to spend it um but in terms of how I managed it I just you just have to do it you have to find time um I would if I had like assignment coming up I would tell the girls right I'm gonna be off my phone all day today it's got to work on this assignment I'll be back tomorrow um but looking back oh even now it's been a bit crazy with the last minute deadlines coming up for uni I've got two during Friday plus the edition coming out the following week you forget things and even when during the launch, I would forget to pay my parking at uni and end up paying the parking ticket there. I was just rushing everywhere because I'd get out of my car. I had to rush to a business meeting and I had to rush to lectures and I had to do this. And the next thing you know, I got a parking ticket come through because I never paid my parking that day. Because <laughs> I forgot, because I, yeah. I couldn't remember what I was doing. Like, it's overwhelming, was yeah. Yeah, because you're just on the cycle of getting things done. Like even this weekend, I haven't been home and I'm still doing uni work. Mm-hmm. and I'm still doing uplifted but I'm not in my own home so I haven't got my diary here I haven't got I'm not sleeping properly because I'm a boyfriend so I don't have everything around me and then you forget yeah. things and now it's Tuesday to, and next thing you know it's going to be Friday everything's going to be due in but once it's done it's done but in terms of like managing stress you just have to you just have to find the time um find the time you have to make like sort of sacrifices like I didn't all my friends went out the weekend before the launch and I was like I can't go out I've so so much to do um which is upsetting because you think oh I should be going out I'm 20 but then this is more important so definitely you need to make choices sacrifices exactly so you mentioned a uh, competition so did you get funded by uh, was it like a uni competition yeah you get funding from them to start yeah, your so magazine it, yeah so in October last year we won the second largest prize at um the Flare Ignite competition at university we won that one and then a couple of weeks later we got an email inviting us to come to this it's called like a fast track to funds event mm-hmm. where you go in the morning at nine you pitch whatever you pitch your idea to a panel of judges then you have to do an online okay. sort of survey questionnaire application and then by 5 p.m you get money if you win anything and I think it was you know you've got bottom prize of 50 pounds top prize of a thousand and we won the top prize which is great and that was just all in a day so we, we won that as well um and we're up for what well, we're up for this year um in june we're up for the best new prom was it the most promising new business in Hertfordshire awards um we're up for that and then we're also a part of the deutsche bank awards um we can be more funded we just enter so much awards to see if you can get money because it's everything's expensive and we spent we spent all the money that we've won already so we need to get... what, what did you spend it on what was like the process of the most the expensive magazines? yeah the most expensive thing is the web build um to have a business bank account you have to pay a monthly fee of that um go into networking events because there's three of us that's like three tickets to buy yeah. We had to buy black banners, business cards, flyers, and um, the photo shoot. We had to pay a photographer. We had to pay all the girls' travel and accommodation. And two of them stayed over. Was it? No, three of them stayed over in the end because where they was coming from Manchester, and their call time was nine a.m. We couldn't ask them to get the train at five o'clock because they're not getting paid to come. So we was like, right, we pay for the hotel, we paid for their travel. 
we paid for their food, we got um, goodie bags, um, we gave them money on the way home so they can get dinner. Um, yeah, because we, we never paid them on the day because it, it was free and they wanted to come down. We couldn't expect them to pay for everything, so we tried yeah. to accommodate as much. That mm -hmm. all costs, um, yeah, props. That we, I had to pay for a flower wall. Um, it was very lucky, though, that two, we got managed to work with two brands who sent us free stuff for the shoot. So we had the free um, support wear that the girls could wear, and we had free sort of work wear where we had a designer come down. She should come to the shoot from London. She gave us free for the work wear section, for the stoma bag. Um, but, yeah, all very expensive. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. So do you have any uh, tips for people that are probably wanting to start their own magazine or their own business and they're in journalism what what kind of advice would you give them um the first thing i'll say is like you've got to like defer if you want it to be a blog or if you want it to be a magazine that makes sense because they're quite i thought would just be doing like a blog thing but that with a magazine there's a lot more business things to go with it if you're doing a blog you can do it by yourself it'd be a lot cheaper um you could probably work on it on your own time and it'd be fun if you want it to be a magazine the last you've got to understand that the last thing you're going to do is write articles. You've got to do everything else first. Mm -hmm. um, so I would suggest doing it with someone. I mean, there was four of us and we went down to three um, and we really felt the workloads. When, so if it went down to two, I think it would, it would never happen because of how much there is to do. Or it would happen, but a lot slower. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, to find a group of friends that you love to do it with and just do it. Enter awards, uh, enter funding because you need money for it. Um, pay for a good web designer. Um, we tried, like, I thought, okay, I'll make I'll make the website by my own. I've done media, I'll be fine. But pay, just put the money into a web build. Everything's done. Everything looks good. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but yeah, just have remember to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> and do you think, what, what do you think was the most challenging part of creating a magazine? um le learning everything because I've never like even though I, I, I interned for Marie Claire I just write an invoice and that's all yeah. I do when you run a magazine I've got to learn about business laws and copyright and trademarks and companies house and filing accounts and filing taxes and am I VAT registered or all these questions I even now someone email me something I'll be like girls are we this like, do we have to do this <laughs> Yeah. We, had to do a we had to file our confirmation statement in my, um, last month and we were like what's a comp we had to get an account oh it was <laughs> it's so much um just learning it all um mm -hmm. yeah learning it all okay is there any anything that you want to mention for the last question the last few bits of the interview no no I, i'm all good um if you've got any more questions just like text them over to me and i'll reply oh, but yeah no all good